What is going on everybody and welcome back to the Frames Jankly Vapor Channel. We're back at you guys for another review and today we have another single 21700 regulated mod going up to 100 watts coming with a brand new mesh sub ohm tank and all that good stuff coming from Freemax and it is the Maxis Solo and would you look at that all RGB'd out. Of course I got mine tuned to that green for the green room of course but of course we're going to talk about this thing guys give you guys a complete run through when we jump down to the table show you guys the ins and outs of the packaging and everything that's going to come along with this of course show you guys the ins and outs of the menu system and everything when it comes down to the mod itself give you guys a breakdown of the tank and all that good stuff and then once that's all said and done you guys know the drill we'll jump back up top you guys my pros my cons my final thoughts all that good stuff so of course with all that being said let's just go ahead and dive down to the table and get to it take a closer look at the maxis solo from freemax and we'll see you guys down low. And here we are, guys, down low with the Freemax Maxis Solo Kit. So this is the packaging and device is going to come in right here. Of course, you got Freemax up at the top, Maxis Solo 100 watt kit at the bottom, image of the device itself smack dab in the center. You've got your color indication up at the top here. You've got FM Coiltech 5.0 Double D Mesh FL Platform child resistant and full spectrum vaping on the front there you got some manufacturing information there on this side on the back has the entire kit contents and breakdown of everything that you're going to get along with this thing here so if you guys want to give that a pause and read through you can do so you got your straps and check authenticity another color indication there as well and then on the bottom you've got free max going on there and you've got another free max going on there and of course max this solo 100 watt kit on the side so let's go ahead and slide the sleeve off of course on the top you've got that free max underneath that of course is going to be your maxis solo kit itself which of course we're just going to go ahead and take this out and take a look at what comes on underneath on this little box here so first things first you do get your warranty card which of course you'll read all the information there and of course fill it out with any information you need if you want to take advantage of that warranty you get a little warning card here as well which tells you how about storing your device and all that good stuff making sure you keep it out of reach of children all that you get a USB type C charging cable uh, used for firmware updates and stuff like that. Of course, I always recommend charging on an external charger. You get to your user's manual here as well, fold out style manual, has some color uh, images there as well as a full breakdown of the mod showing you how to go about filling it up, putting your batteries in, switching through the different menu systems, all that good stuff there. And then you also get a uh, spare coil here. This is going to be the dual mesh coil, the uh, 0.2 FL dual coil here and then of course you get the 0.15 pre-installed and then you also get an 18650 battery adapter if you want to use this as a single 18650 of course you'll slide your battery in there and then you have the adapter so you can use those as well so that's what's coming on in the bottom of the box now let's take a look at what's all in the foam here so of course right here is going to be your spare bubble glass section with some spare o-rings and a little silica pack there so if you need to change it out you do have plenty of spare o-rings and you do have a spare glass section so if the one breaks that's pre-installed you do have another one to replace that there of course right here is going to be the freemax solo tank itself we got an 810 drip tip up at the top that does have two o-rings on it but it does also have a single o-ring in the top so any of your other 810 tips should fit in there whether they have an o-ring or not fits in very nice and snug as well right underneath that you do have a sort of push to slide top fill so you're going to kind of push it up slide it back and then boom you got that nice one big kidney shaped hole there for filling and of course once you're done you just slide that back over and then it just drops down right into place there working our way down from that nothing really going on on the chimney section you do have some sort of in, uh, inlets there to allow the liquid to get to the actual coil head as you guys can see working our way down from there you do have a uh, airflow adjustment here full stop on um, full open and full closed as you guys can see there and it does have a nice sort of uh, tension to it so once you set it it shouldn't be sliding around all crazy on you or anything like that when it comes down to the bottom here, you do have designed by Freemax, some warning labels and all that good stuff there. And I will say that with this being a sub ohm tank, this does not have a static 510 pin, guys. So you're not going to want to use this on any hybrid mechanical mods whatsoever, only on a regulated device with a spring-loaded 510. Just want to make sure I put that out there for any new users. Of course, uh, to change the coil, you just pop out the bottom here, or unscrew that there, and then boom, there's your coil head. Makes it super easy for changing your coils out if you end up having a tank with like half a tank of liquid. As long as it's below those little windows there, you'll be able to pull your coil out, switch it out, and then of course just 
press fit it back into place it is held in just with that single o-ring here at the bottom and then of course one up here at the top as well that kind of fits into that top notch of that chimney section so you just kind of pop that into place boom there you go make sure that your cotton's kind of lined up with those outlets there and then that's pretty much it as far as the tank section goes so we'll go ahead and screw that back together and set that back in the packaging here and then we'll take a closer look at the freemax solo itself so of course this is the device you're going to get here i do have the black rendition it's kind of got like some green color accents back here on the back you got maxis solo going down the back of it there you do have freemax going over here on this side over here on this side is something pretty cool because it does have a little locking feature as well so of course once it's unlocked you can use this thing as normal you can vape on it switch your wattage go through the different menu systems all that good stuff and then if you slip slide that down that actually locks the whole mod to where you can't do any adjustments can't fire it can't do anything so I like that little added locking feature in there which I think is kind of adding to the child resistance is what they're talking about but of course you know that's pretty cool as far as that goes you got a very nice clicky firing button as well as nice clicky adjustment buttons here as well you do have a USB type C port at the bottom for firmware updates or charging or anything like that like I said before though highly recommend it using an external charger for charging your batteries up at the top, you do have a nice spring-loaded 510 that is just sunk down in there real nice. You can hold up to a 26 millimeter RDA or RTA on top of this thing before it starts to hang over that little beveled section there. So 26 is about the max that you'll fit on top of this thing there. So let's go ahead and pop open this battery door. Very nice battery door going on here as well. Haven't had any issues with that whatsoever. Locks into place absolutely perfectly. I'm going to grab ourselves a nice Molosel 21700 positive end up. It does have a clear indication down there at the bottom. It does have a nice big red X. So positive end up in this thing. And then just slide that over. Boom, a Freemax tells you your firmware there. And then boom, there's your display. And as you guys can see, oh yeah, LEDs, baby. That's right. So of course, as far as the menu system goes, you got pretty clear display. You do have your battery indication up there at the top. Right next to that will be your resistance once you screw an atomizer on that. Underneath that will be your puff counter. Of course, right here is going to be your wattage or your temperature or what voltage you're at if you're in bypass mode. That's going to be displayed right there in the center. Underneath that shows you what mode you're set in. It has four different modes from what I understand. I'm just going to go down into it real quick. So of course, you've got your power mode. You've got your VPC or your uh, variable curve. You've got your bypass mode. And then you do have your TC or temperature control modes as well and the TCR mode there. So you do have uh, four or five different modes. And then once you go down from that, you also have a couple different settings here. You have normal, sport, and eco. Of course, eco is going to help conserve your battery a little bit there. Normal is just kind of like your normal sort of situation. And sport is kind of like your boost feature there and then right next to that is going to be your voltage and then of course if you go down one more time you go into your settings and then here of course you can do a coil test and this will test your coil let you know what the best resistance or whatever will be you have a timeout feature here and you could set that to how long it will take until your screen times out on you right here is your color theme where you can actually change the different color of the actual theme of the background there so you do have a light blue there you've got a dark blue a purple kind of like tealish green and an orange and then of course white as well I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to that kind of tealish green color that's what I've been using right here underneath that you can turn the LED lights on or off uh, it's pretty simple you just kind of click into there on or off depending on what you want to do there and underneath that you do have your LED controls which is pretty cool because you can have it to where it's always on you can have it to where it breathes so it just kind of flashes on and off and then you can have it flashing to where it'll sit here and it'll just flash through all the different color variations that you got going on for it. And then, of course, underneath that, if you want to leave it on, you can actually use the default colors, which you can go in here and they have nine different colors for you to choose from. So you've kind of got like a kind of teal color or kind of a light blue color, a teal color, green, yellow, orange, pink, purple, a little bit of a darker purple, and then a dark blue there. But if you wanted to, you can go in here and actually customize by changing the red, blue, green balance to set it to whatever you want. So let's go in here and let's say we want to do purple. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go down to the green. We're going to turn that all the way down here. And then, boom, you've got a nice, bright purple sort of situation. Well, hey, maybe we want to do like a teal color. All right, well, let's go back up here to the red. 
we'll take all the red out of this here just like so get that nice dark blue go down here to the green and we'll kind of just add, we'll kind of add a couple until we get to that right tint that we like boom there you go you know what i mean so that's pretty cool being able to customize your uh led lights to whatever color fits your uh, your personal preference i personally of course like to rock all green so that's what we're going to set this to exit there you go right here you can change between celsius or fahrenheit underneath that is your reset your puff counter you can reset the time that you have on here and then you can reset the entire chip and of course exit there so that's pretty much what you got going on for the actual mod itself guys pretty straightforward as far as that goes all that good stuff so what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and put the tank back on here fill it up jump back up top and then give you guys some pros cons and final thoughts so uh, with all that being said, catch you guys up top. And here we are back up top with the Freemax Maxis Solo. So let's go ahead and talk about it, guys. Give you guys some pros, some cons, some final thoughts. Of course, this is 100% my opinion as always. So just take it for what it is. Going to start off with the Maxis Solo mod itself. Got to say, guys, pretty damn good job when it comes down to the manufacturing on this. I got to say big ups to uh, Freemax because this thing is very very nice and substantial as far as the construction goes. It doesn't feel cheap in any way. Um, you do have a little bit of sort of plastic going on on the back, but as far as the frame of the mod goes, very, very substantial and very nicely constructed as far as that goes. Same thing goes for that battery door at the bottom. Haven't had one single issue with this thing. Latches in place and holds in very nicely. Haven't had one single problem when it comes down to that. I gotta say, I do like the overall just look and form of this mod as well. It's very, very comfortable in the hand if you wanna just kinda slide that rounded end of the crook of your thumb and finger fire it. Very, very comfortable, hold it like that. Or if you wanna kinda you know, wrap your fingers around it this way and thumb fire it. Either way, it's very, very comfortable whether you're right-handed or left-handed. I gotta say, when it comes down to that, they did a pretty damn good job with the overall ergonomics of this thing. Uh, I really do like just the overall manufacturing on this, guys. It is a pretty damn classy looking mod. I kinda like the fact that they have this big kind of clear sort of window here that shows you the actual chip you can kind of see the little circuitry and stuff that is going on in there like you guys seen in the down low and having those leds to kind of backlight it does kind of add a little bit of something extra to it i've got to say for me personally usually when it comes to rgbs or led lights it's not really my thing but with this one I kind of dig it, guys. I kind of really like the look of this thing. Not only that, but as you guys seen in the down low, you can customize the LED backlight that's going on in the mod to whatever specific color you like by changing the red, blue, green balance. You can literally sit there and pick whatever color you like to match whatever drip tip you may have or whatever sort of add you might have on top. You can really dial it into whatever specific color you like, which is one thing that I absolutely love, and I think that's definitely gonna be a pro. One thing I also really love that they did with this is adding this little locking feature right here, guys. So if you slide this thing down there, now if you go to hit this fire button, nothing happens. Adjustment button, nothing happens, and it tells you that the mod is locked right there. So if you wanna you know, throw this thing in your pocket real quick, while you're you know, running some errands or you're gonna throw it in your bag or something like that, you don't necessarily have to turn it off. All you gotta do is just slide that little lock feature down and that'll lock your mod and you shouldn't have any issues. Of course, I always suggest if you're gonna put a mod in your pocket or in a bag that you turn it off. That way you don't have to worry about it. You know, If it's off, you don't have any worries about this thing starting to fire on you or anything like that. But with this little switch, if you're just going to throw it in your pocket real quick, you don't have to worry about turning it off or anything like that. Or if you want to just have this thing sitting on your desk or something like that, you may have small kids or children around. They're not going to be able to grab this thing and start just vaping on it or anything like that because it does have that little locking feature. So it's kind of like a little child resistance sort of feature on there, which I think is a huge, huge pro. And I would like to see, you know, maybe some other companies do that. Just add a little switch on the side that just locks the whole thing. And, you know, it just kind of takes any of the guessing work out. Of, oh, did I turn the mod off? Did I turn it on? What's going on there? Nah, just flip that switch. You're good to go. But, of course, I do always, always recommend turning a mod off before putting it in your pocket or in a bag. That way you don't have to worry about it. But having that little lock feature is just a little added safety to this thing as well. So definitely love that about it. Super, super crystal clear display, as you guys can see right there. And as you guys seen in the down low, shows you guys everything you need to see from your battery indication to your uh, resistance what wattage you're running it at, what mode you're set in, and all that good stuff there. So pretty simple and straightforward as far as the menu goes. I really do like it. Very crystal clear. No really too much things that you have to go searching for. Everything's pretty much just right there as you need it. As far as the menu system goes, it is a little bit lengthy as far as you know the menus go, especially with nowadays. A lot of mods are very, very simple as far as the menu system goes. When it comes down to changing through the different modes and stuff, that is pretty simple. You know, you just kind of go down to that power setting, 
after you've given it three clicks, one, two, three, you go down to that power setting or whatever, and you just kind of flip through them, and then once you get to where you're at, you hit the fire button, go to your next thing, and just kind of do that as most mods do but then of course they do have the more in-depth menu system where you get down to you know customizing your led lights and the different theme and you know checking what firmware you have and resetting your puff counter and all that stuff it's pretty straightforward and simple to move through you're just going to kind of give it one two three clicks and then go down to your settings give it a click get into your menu and then of course you'll just cycle through to whatever thing that you want give it a click I'll bring you into that next menu and you just kind of work through it. So I will say it's a little bit more lengthy than some of the other single 21700 regulated mods out there as far as the menu system goes. But if you're not really going to go in there to be changing the theme or the different LED lights or anything like that, changing through the menus or the mode systems is pretty easy because it's pretty much done just right through that first home screen there. You don't have to go into the actual menu system. You just give it that three clicks and go down to the power setting as you can see right there and then you can kind of just cycle through them just like so after you get clicked into it and all that stuff as you guys seen in the download. So as far as the menu system goes, a little lengthier than some of the others, but it's definitely still pretty easy to move through once you get the hang of it or once you do it once or twice. So that's as far as it's going to go for the menu system. Now when it comes down to the overall mod and the performance on this, I've got to say it performs pretty damn well for a single 21700 mod. Of course, it's going to give you more battery life than a single 18650, but of course you can use 18650s in here if you like because they do offer an adapter. If you don't have any 21700s and you want to rock an 18650 in here, you can do so. But of course, if it's 21700, I'm putting a 21700 in it because I'm going to get all that battery life, baby. And of course, you do get a pretty decent amount of battery life out of this. Of course, that's dependent on what water you're running it at and what resistance your coil is and all that good stuff but overall it does perform very well when I put this thing at about 65 70 watts I feel like I'm getting that 65 to 70 watts of course it's got your temperature control you can set your own curve and it does have a bypass mode on there as well of course with that bypass mode you're just gonna get whatever the voltage of the battery is and as that drops course your voltage will drop and all that good stuff but overall guys pretty simple and straightforward as far as the menu system goes of course like I said when you get into the more in-depth menu with like the LEDs and the themes it's a little bit more lengthy but it's just kind of clicking through it and just getting to where you need to go performance wise the mod performs very nicely he's got very nice clicky firing buttons very nice clicky adjustment buttons on there as well USB type C if you need to do any firmware updates or charging of course I always recommend charging on an external charger just because you don't want to run the risk of burning your board out or you know having some sort of situation happen always just safer using an external charger but overall guys I gotta say for the Freemax solo mod itself if you're looking for something a little different and you know it's got some LED lights that you can customize to your own liking single 21700 watt mod Freemax solo is not a bad grab guys um, as far as the cons go, I do have a couple little things. One thing being, for this being a single 21700 mod, it is a little bit bigger than some of the other ones that are out on the market. For instance, here is the Target from Vapresso single 21700 100 watt mod compared to the Maxis Solo. So it's definitely got to, you know a little bit of some width there, a little bit of height going on. But as far as you know this sort of format, you kind of have that same sort of dimensions going on there. But as you guys can see. You know, this one's definitely a little bit taller, a little bit wider this way. So you, that's kind of what you're going to get with this. But overall, that's the only other little con that I have is like I think there's, you know, a little bit of space that maybe could have been condensed down a little bit, make it a little bit more compact. But other than that, it does have a nice, very comfy hand feel other than that. And one thing that I would have really liked to see, too, is being able to actually match the theme on the actual uh, screen with the LEDs in the background. They only give you like three or four different colors to choose from when it comes down to the theme. And having the ability to customize this to whatever color you would like, I would just like to be able to match the theme to it. I just think that'd be kind of cool. Uh, other than that, that's really all I've got. It's a little bit bigger than some of the other 21700 mods, and I would have liked to be able to match the theme, the different color LED or whatever. But other than that, pretty solid single 21700 mod overall, guys. I've got to say I've been really enjoying it. I really do enjoy the look of that LEDs, being able to customize it to your liking. Definitely going to be a pro. Now, let's go ahead and move her over to the fire luke solo tank itself. First things first, going to start off, I love the fact that they went with a 810 drip tip guys so as long as you have you know an 810 drip tip you could throw them in there dhds half moons all of my 810 tips fit in there absolutely fine if you're not into the big you know kind of tall drip tip on there you can throw a little chop top on there if you want to or any of your other 810 tips and they'll fit in there very nicely because it does have a single o-ring up at that top so it should hold all of your tips in there whether they have an o-ring or not they should be able to pop in there and hold very very nicely Pretty easy to fill, guys, as far as that goes. You're just going to kind of pop the top, slide that back, 
fill it up and then when you're done just kind of push it forward and it just kind of falls back into place so as far as filling it goes super super easy swapping coils out on this thing is very easy as well guys you literally can just unscrew the base just like so as long as you don't have a full tank you can pop that coil out grab your new one pop that back in and then just screw this boy, bad boy back down super easy to change your coil out no problems when it comes down to that you have five mil capacity on this thing as well with both glass sections that you get because you only get bubble glasses with this but they do give you two so you get the one that's obviously pre-installed and then you get a spare in the packaging as well so five mils capacity you can get a definitely a good amount of vape time out of this before you're gonna have to fill this up when it comes to the flavor on this thing too guys when it comes down to these new fm coil tech 5.0 coils that they're offering with this i've got to say the flavor is pretty damn good guys when either you're using the single or the dual mesh that they offer right now i've got that 0.15 in there rocking at about 65 to 70 watts i've kind of just been bouncing back and forth just depending on what liquid i have in there you do get some pretty damn good flavor i won't say it's the absolute best flavor i've ever had but it's definitely up there with some of the better flavor as far as stock coils go as far as the longevity goes on this thing i've been vaping on this for about a week to about a week and a half on this same coil and i've got to say flavor still coming through haven't had too many leaking issues i will say that when it comes to these pre-stock coils if you fill this thing up vape on it a few times and just leave it sitting for a while and you don't do anything with it for a couple days or anything like that that's usually when you st tend to start running into like leaking issues and stuff like that so as long as you're pretty consistently vaping on this thing you shouldn't have too many issues but i will say that there was a time where this sat on my desk for about a day or so where i didn't vape on it picked it up and there wasn't too much leaking i had a little bit of you know a little wispiness kind of around the airflow but that could just be due to condensation but other than that haven't really had any leaking issues or anything like that when it comes down to this tank flavor is pretty damn good the airflow is fairly smooth for the most part but the one thing about it is is it does kind of have a little bit of a sound to it i'll go ahead and just take a couple rips on this thing just to kind of give you guys an idea i also rock this about half closed as well because it does have a pretty substantial amount of airflow with it wide open so i cut it down about halfway and this is kind of the sound that i've been getting out of this thing So I don't know if you guys can hear that there, but it's definitely got a little bit of that whistle sort of sound coming with it. And of course, the harder you hit it, the louder the whistle gets. And of course, you know, depending on where your airflow is, sometimes it's louder, sometimes it's not as bad. But that's one thing that kind of eh, kind of gets on my nerves. But other than that, when it comes down to the tank, you get some pretty good airflow. You get some pretty damn good flavor on this thing. Super easy to fill. Five mil capacity, 810 drip tip. That's pretty much what I got for the pros, but for the cons, I do have two things that I want to talk about. First things first is I'm not the biggest fan of this uh, pull-up slide top fill thing. I just think it's it just it just doesn't feel uh, secure to me. Like I'm one of those people that you know when I'm walking back and forth from my break at work and stuff like that, I like to throw my mod in my pocket or I throw my mod in my bag. And just if this thing gets hit just the wrong way, I just feel like it's gonna pop out open and you know spill into my pocket or something like that it's just not the most secure top fill that i've seen and uh, i would have much rather you know maybe this thing when it slides back over kind of drops down a little bit more so you're gonna have to push it up a little bit more for it to get over because honestly it doesn't really take that much as you guys can see there you can do it with one hand so i could just see this happening in my pocket and then just a pocket full of liquid and that would be a pretty big bummer so i'm not a huge huge fan about that top fill and i'm not the biggest fan of the sound of the airflow you do get a little bit of a hiss coming with it you do have a pretty smooth draw for the most part but it does have that sort of hiss whistle sort of situation going on with it so those are the only two cons i have but other than that guys for the free max solo i would say it's a pretty damn good mod overall when it comes down to the kit itself not too shabby i'm not exactly sure what the price point is on this thing guys but if you're looking for something you know single 21 700 with 100 watt output with some customizable led lights and a you know sub ohm mesh coil tank Check out the Freemax solo. Not a bad little grab, if I do say so myself. So shout out to Freemax for sending them my way. I appreciate each and every one of you guys taking time out of your day to watch this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my thoughts and opinions. If you did, leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And also make sure you guys check out the green room happening every Friday right here, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, with Sean Typhon, Overdrip, and myself. And we'd love to see all you shedheads out there in chat. I know I say it every video, and I'm going to continue because I'd love to see all of you guys out there 
new ones, old ones, whoever, everybody's welcome. Come hang out. And then, of course, also go over to shedtimepodcast.com. Check out the podcast. Let us know what you guys think. Available on all your podcasting platforms. If you want to help support what we're doing over there, we do have a Patreon link over on the website if you want to support the, the podcast. And I do have a Patreon as well for the channel if you want to help support what I'm doing here as far as reviews and as far as the green room goes. All that's linked down in the description of this video, guys. So thank you guys all for taking time out of your day. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And as always, going to send all those positive vibes, crisp high fives. And as always, let's just vape on, shedheads.